Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Book HQ. So today I'm going to be talking about Avengers Infinity War. I have waited a really long time to talk about it because I think mostly I was getting over the trauma to be honest. But I think by now everybody's had a chance to see it so that when I talk about things it's not going to be like, uh, oh, spoiler and like upset people. We'd been waiting a really long time for it. I mean you can count all the end credit scenes and all the end end credit scenes to just kind of get an idea of how long we've been waiting for this film to come out and it came out and it was everything that I wanted and also everything I didn't want. That part that I didn't want is what is the so much more of the film. It was basically kind of like, you know, when we watched Civil War and we saw all the Marvel heroes coming together in different camps, I guess, to be against each other. This was kind of like that on a bigger scale because there were like even more of the Marvel heroes. It was also interesting to see them sort of pairing up in different groups. Guardians of the Galaxy kind of working with Thor and then that group also splits up into two groups. And then you have Iron Man with Doctor Strange and Spider-Man and then later on part of the Guardians of the Galaxy joined that group as well. And then we see Cap. Goodness, just like the introduction of Cap. I just like got goosebumps when I was watching it because there's a fight scene going on in, I think they're in Scotland, and they're like in the train station and the children of Thanos, the, the chick, she's like about to attack Scarlet Witch and Scarlet Witch has to like defend herself but also defend Vision. And there's this train passing by behind them and for some reason the children of Thanos uh, don't attack Scarlet Witch they're kind of looking behind her looking at the train we're all like why is she looking at the train and even Scarlet Witch at one point is like okay what's going on behind the train then the train like passes as passing like in the little spaces you can see like a silhouette of a person but you don't see who that person is and then when the train finally passes this child of Thanos the chick she like throws her I want to say it's like a trident but it's like an alien trident anyway she throws it and the silhouette kind of like does this catches it with one hand and it's like bam and it's like it's captain america and he looks amazing let me just take a moment to fangirl out like the costume is all dark he doesn't have the shield anymore he's grown out his hair he's, he's sporting peach fuzz it looks so good i actually reached over my husband to like pat my sister on the hand and be like oh my god he looks so hot then we see Black Widow and the guy who always calls Ant-Man Tic Tac. I don't remember his name right now, <laughs> which is terrible. Anthony Mackie also. And so they come and basically save Scarlet Witch and Vision from those two children of Thanos. That's kind of just like one of my favorite scenes. We get to see one of the main major battles, of course, happens in Wakanda, as we all kind of suspected. And it's a big deal. What I, what I really liked about the film was that there were a lot of moments where we see strong women kind of fighting together where the the one child of Thanos is like oh it's a pity you're gonna have to die alone she says to Scarlet Witch and Black Widow is like she's not alone and then she joins the fight and Okoye also joins the fight and it's it's really cool to kind of see that the strong female Marvel characters uh, working together and doing their thing there were a lot of really cool fight scenes with Doctor Strange especially Doctor Strange versus Thanos which I guess you have to watch the film to see I don't really want to do a lot of spoiling in this review. Basically, the film does not end on a high note. The film kind of ends with um, our heroes defeated, and that's what was really like devastating and shocking. I was like, what? It was very Game of Thrones like. Because in Game of Thrones, like your heroes and your fairy characters are just like off, and you're like, oh. you press pause and like go away and come back and like, well, maybe this is one of those dream sequences, and then the person will wake up and it won't be this. But no, it really is this. And this is kind of the feeling that you have in Avengers: Infinity War. Obviously, really looking forward to what the next one is going to be like. The new poster for the next one, you see like basically who these Avengers are who's gonna really be at the forefront of these Avengers seeing if some of them are not there anymore. Really cool thing was that at the end, end credit scene of this film was Nick Fury dialing Captain Marvel and I am really excited to see the Captain Marvel film just because I kind of feel like this chick is gonna make all the other Avengers look like chumps. I mean, she can move planets with her hands. So I'm really excited to see Brie Larson bring that character to life. And I'm feeling like it's gonna be incredible. A little bit kind of sad to see that it's another female uh, Marvel character getting the very first female Marvel movie instead of Black Widow, but it's still something really exciting and really looking forward to. It was cool to see a, a couple of favorites. And the big question, of course, was where Ant-Man 
and the wasp. That question is going to be answered now in the next film that's coming up. Apparently, it's really important to see Ant-Man and the wasp because they're going to introduce a concept which is going to be pivotal to understanding what's going to happen in the next Avengers movie. And let me know what you think. Join me next time. Keep reading and keep watching. Bye-bye.